Welcome back to the Lars Larson Show. There are a lot of people who have an impact on the United States of America and Americans that aren't household names, but one of those people has passed away, and we need more like him. And to talk about him, we've invited our friend Frank Gaffney, the founder and president of the Center for Security Policy, on to talk about Kenneth Bialkin. Um, Frank, welcome back to the program. Would you explain to my audience who Kenneth Bialkin was? You, well, you captured it perfectly. Kenneth Bialkin was one of those um, little-known figures outside of his principal circle as a very accomplished attorney in New York City and a leader of a number of Jewish organizations over the years that support uh, both you know, a strong America and a strong Israel. And um, through his acumen as a leader, Lars, and through his generous philanthropy with countless other organizations, including on the same mine, he made a real mark on, I think, a generation or two of Americans uh, helping them understand the important strategic relationship between the United States and the Jewish state and to strengthen that bond. And uh, it's terrible that uh, he has passed at a moment when that kind of clarity is so urgently needed because we're being buffeted by those who say, oh, Israel must be boycotted and divested and sanctioned and otherwise uh, destroyed. Um, And there are too few voices saying that ain't so. And Well, tell me this, Frank, because one of the concerns I have, we all know that we're going to pass one of these days, and we just hope that whatever cause it is that we've taken up, that somebody is going to be there to take over, you know, pick up the yoke and and continue with the job. And and I guess I'm wondering whether we're we're getting far enough away from the creation of the state of Israel and too much into the you know the modern era where people are afraid to say boo to people like uh, you know like uh, Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib and 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 others who've advanced a lot of these anti-Semitic ideas. So we 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 lose voices like Kenny Bialkin. And then we don't have somebody who's the natural heir to that to step in and say, I'll be that strong voice in favor of those things. Uh, Are are we seeing a a dearth of those people? Well, there's a passing of a generation of people who were both very um, active in their own personal uh, commitment to this cause, Lars, and, and in their help to others who were working in those same vineyards. Um, I, I don't know that there's an obvious error in the sense of the combination of, uh, you know, financial resources as well as strategic vision uh, for many of those folks, including Kenny Bialkin. I, I'm sure there are, and I hope that they'll become more obvious and, and visible in his absence. But here's the bigger problem, and you, you again, put your finger on it. Um, we are watching one of the two major political parties of this country succumbing increasingly to the demands of people who are the antithesis of the Gene Bialkins, who are in some cases uh, rabid anti-Semites, um, Sharia supremacists in most cases, uh, being the, the, uh, the source of that animus towards Israel and to Jews. Um, and uh, People who are not necessarily, um, you know, um, jihadists, but who are even Jewish in some cases, but who nonetheless feel uh, that they must disassociate themselves from Israel. They must be condemning of it. They must be um, even playing a role, supporting those who would destroy the place. And that is such an appalling prospect that... uh, the Republicans, I think, have by and large remained very strongly supportive of Israel, President Trump being a, a prominent example of it. But I, I worked for Scoop Jackson uh, up from up in your neck of the woods, a uh, United States senator decades ago. And I, I just imagine the high RPM at which he is spinning in his grave over what has happened to the party that he loved and led for much of his distinguished service. Well, see, I, I may, yeah. I, I may, I may, I may be a Neanderthal about this, uh, Frank. But from my point of view, 
I associate anti-Semitism with groups like the Klan. I also associate the Klan with the Democrat Party because, as my friend Ann Coulter likes to say, not every Klan member, uh, not every Democrat was a Klan member, but every Klan member was a Democrat. And, of course, these days I hear people saying, oh, that was a different uh, Democrat Party you're talking about. We've completely changed. I'm thinking... No, I think you were anti-Semites back then. I think you're still anti-Semites today. And the only reason that you're you're not uh, antagonistic toward people of color is you've decided you can use them for a period of time for your political advantage. So are you uh, anti or pro uh, black in America? I would say anti. Are you anti or pro uh, Jewish, uh, the Jewish religion? And I'd say you're anti. So in other words, you're exactly what we thought that group was. And this is a country. And remember, Frank, a lot of this happened when I was a kid and when I was in high school. But there were huge controversies about really when you got down to the the end of it, relatively inconsequential compared to the success of the state of Israel, our ally, but where somebody would belong to a golf club and the golf club would say, we don't admit Jewish members. And you'd say, well, that's outrageous. How dare you do that as a, as a club? And how dare you be a member of that club? And there, it was a big to do. And, and today, we've got people like Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib who are openly antagonistic, not just toward individual Jewish people, but toward the entire state of Israel. And most of the news media is ho-hum about it, or, or, or they're even supportive. They say, well, they have the right to be that way. Well, no. Well, I don't know. Yes, they have the right to express whatever unpopular anti-Semitic uh, belief they, they have. They certainly have the, the First Amendment right to say it. But if they say it, there's supposed to be a consequence that we don't let people like that be in public life. And yet the Democrat Party has supported, uh, you know, racial antagonists like Lyndon Johnson and Robert Byrd. And they've supported uh, anti-Israel and anti-Jewish antagonists today, like Omar and Tlaib. Yeah. And the trouble is, as you know, Lars, there's likely to be a lot more Ilan Omars and Rashida Tlaibs in Congress and in public life. Um, if these Sharia supremacists and our myths have their way. Uh, there's a group called the U.S. Council of Muslim Organizations that is essentially a, a sort of theocratic political party made up of these Muslim Brotherhood fronts and, and their ilk. And they are intent on running many more people um, with this same sort of agenda for Congress, seeking through you know, popular votes, um, primarily, I think, in many cases, uh, in immigrant communities like Ilan Omar's that have not really assimilated and have, uh, you know, virulent attitudes, not just towards Israel, for heaven's sakes, but towards the United States as well. And yet they're going to be elected um, to, you know, uh, legislative and other offices. And we are going to find, in, in the case, for example, of Keith Ellison, who is a former member of Congress, now the Attorney General of the state of Minnesota, Yep, acting on this same agenda, and I think um, an increasing problem for the Democratic Party, but also for the country, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately. Frank, thanks for the work you do at the Center for Security Policy. We always appreciate your insights. Thank you, my friend. I think on that same kind of note, the left seems to give anybody who says they are a follower of Islam a pass. But should a man who supports the state of Islam and attacked police be let loose on house arrest? I'll tell you about a case coming out of Phoenix, Arizona, and I'll give you the details on that in just a moment. And if you want to jump into the best conversation and talk journalism right here every single night at 866-HEY-LARS, that's 866-439-5277. Emails go to talk at LarsLarson.com. Also coming up this hour, your emails and if the president is guilty of having an affair, would that change your vote? We'll talk about this and about whether Stormy Daniels is going to make a reappearance. You're listening to The Lars Larson Show.